Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. These are your Linux, open source and privacy news for the first half of February, with some epic mega grants, Wine, Proton and DXVK releases, a big Google privacy breach and a lot more. Stay tuned to get all the details. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode provides Linux servers that make it super easy and affordable to host your own app, website or service right in the cloud. The interface is really easy to use and you can start your own server in just a few clicks. The best part is the one-click apps. Linode has a lot of services you can install on your server with just a click, like OpenVPN. Unlike third-party VPN services, using Linode and the one-click OpenVPN app allows you to keep total control of your data, privacy and security. For $5 a month, you can use Linode to host your own VPN and be certain that all your data is in your hands. Sign up for your free account today and get a $20 credit, which amounts to 4 months of free VPN, just by clicking the link in the description. February the 2nd. Wine 5.1 has been released, with a bunch of new features, including support for more compilers, better error reporting of error location in JScript and VBScript, and a lot of other stuff I have no understanding of. It also fixes 32 bugs, including Darksiders, Overwatch, Sniper Elite 2, and Warframe. February the 3rd. The Godot engine got an Epic Games Mega Grant of $250,000. Epic seems to continue their grand tour of funding open source projects, although that one baffles me quite a bit. It's an engine, competing with the Unreal Engine made by Epic. Still, it's nice to see open source projects funded to support their development, and Godot seems to be coming along nicely these days. February the 4th. Google sent videos from some users to others that requested a takeout. Turns out people requesting Google send them all their photos and videos could also receive content that wasn't theirs at random. This means that Google unwillingly gave some personal data, and photos and videos can be very personal, to other users. As it stands, they didn't issue an apology or an explanation for how this might have happened, which further reinforces my belief that you should not trust them with any of your stuff. Google is convenient, but they also really don't care. A flaw in sudo has been patched after staying undiscovered for 8 years. Turns out that passing a huge series of characters through a pipe when the sudo command asked for a password allowed to access super user privileges. If you update your distro, you should now be safe from the vulnerability. Nvidia launched its game streaming service, GeForce Now, and states it's open to everyone on all platforms. Except it's not, since it doesn't support iOS or Linux, and isn't available on every market yet. While GeForce Now seems to allow you to use games from a lot of different services like Steam, which is a far better approach than what Stadia offers, a game streaming service is supposed to be platform agnostic or it doesn't really add anything to the market. Not being available on all platforms seems like a weird idea. February the 5th. Google will block some types of video ads in Chrome, which are judged too disturbing for the users, which is a good thing. The three formats that Google targets are non-skippable ads that last longer than 31 seconds, mid-roll ads, and banners that appear on top of a playing video and cover more than 20% of the video content. This should help ensure that the video watching experience is a lot more interesting, and Google probably hopes that users won't resort to ad block as much if their experience is less filled with ads. Since YouTube allows mid-roll ads, it will be interesting to see how that will work out. February the 7th. The XVK 1.5.4 was released, and it's mostly a bug fix release. It fixes a regression for DirectX 9 games, and bugs for Anno 1701, The Witcher, and other titles. Which leads us nicely to the newest Proton 5.0 release, and this one is a big one. It's based on Wine 5.0 and brings DXVK 1.5.4 and FAudio 20.02. It also enables DXVK by default for DirectX 9 games, so expect better performance from these older games. More games using the Denuvo DRM system can now be played as well, including Abzu, Batman Arkham Knights or Just Cause 3. Wine 5.0 also brings initial support for multi-monitor, and this will be built upon with newer versions of Wine. As always, Proton will update automatically through Steam. The elementary OS devs have launched their crowdfunded campaign to bring the App Center to everyone. Their goal is to build a solution that would allow any distro to ship the App Center and a payment method for developers who wish to monetize their work. It would be built on top of the App Center backend and Flatpak. The campaign is already fully funded, after about 7 days, and the team will meet in person for a week-long coding sprint to implement all these features. You can still grab some elementary swag if you contribute, I know I did. February the 10th. 
the South Korean government is exploring the option to replace its Windows-based fleet by Linux. This would represent 3.3 million machines, and while this shift would be staged over several years, it has already begun with a bunch of departments already using Linux-based systems. The South Korean government estimates it would cost around $655 million to migrate all their computers to Windows 10, and I can get why this is not an acceptable cost for a tax-funded government. The personal data of 6.5 million Israeli voters have been exposed through a website used by the government to communicate with voters, including full names, addresses and identity card numbers. The leak was downplayed by Israel's government, but there is no real word on how long that flaw has been there or how many people might have accessed the data. Mate 1.24 was released. The desktop environment brings a Do Not Disturb setting, a new date and time application and a new disk image mounter. The panel now supports Wayland and high DPI displays. The window manager also received a lot of attention, with more old-school themes, high DPI enhancements and the ability to set invisible borders for windows. The Alt-Tab switcher has also been changed to be more usable and you can tweak the acceleration profiles for your mouse, which seems to be in high demand, although I never quite saw what purpose that served. February the 13th. iVPN made all of its VPN clients open source, following in the footsteps of ProtonVPN. Their Android, macOS, iOS and Windows apps are now fully open source, using the GPL v3. They also plan to release the source code for key parts of their infrastructure to allow for increased transparency and confidence in their service. Microsoft now shows an ad for Edge in the Start menu of Windows, and this ad specifically targets Firefox users. It means that if you use Firefox on Windows, you'll probably see a banner on top of your Start menu asking you to try out the new Chromium-based Edge. This kind of practice, while not really anti-competitive, is still pretty stinky and intrusive. An OS should not push its own products on you. While Microsoft seems to make efforts towards open source and Linux, this kind of behavior shows that the entire company has not moved at the same pace on the matter. February the 15th. Deep Silver, publisher of the Metro series, announced they are working on bringing Metro Exodus to Linux. While there are no details as of yet, a post on the Steam forum that's been open since 2018 got a reply from the dev team saying that they are working on such a port. As Gaming on Linux points out, since they are bringing the game to Stadia, a full Linux port doesn't seem too outlandish. Let's hope this brings another fantastic game to our platform soon. And that's it for the news for the first half of January 2020. If you liked this video, don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you really did like the video, I have a Patreon page, I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!